Hey guys, John V here from Phone Arena. You're watching our in-depth video review of the Samsung Brightside. It's available right now through Verizon Wireless for the two-year contract price of $100. It features a landscape-style QWERTY keyboard, but surprisingly enough, it's not a smartphone. It's in fact a feature phone. So honestly, the handset's design is pretty forgettable just because it's quite indicative of any feature phone out there. But it does take some design cues out of the Samsung Droid Charges design just because of the uh, camera in the back. Besides that, it's pretty bland. It's constructed out of cheap plastic, lightweight, fairly compact for a device with a QWERTY keyboard. But nothing really compelling about it. It seems as though we've traveled back to the future with the Samsung Brightside. That's because it's sporting a minuscule 3.1 inch QVJ display. So that's 240 by 340 pixels. Obviously it's not big on details. And on top of that, color reproduction is a little bit on the bland side. It has, a, it has some very poor viewing angles, easily washes out. Interestingly enough though, it is a capacitive touchscreen so that is a, instead of a resistive one. You really don't want to use the numeric keypad to type up messages, even though it offers T9 support for predictive text. That's what the landscape style QWERTY keyboard is here for. It looks very similar, similar to some other low-end smartphones from Samsung's camp. And for the most part, we're pretty content. We like the responsive feel of the buttons here. But since it's rather flush to the surface, the entire thing, it makes for some difficulty filling them out. So here's the lock screen of the Samsung Brightside. This is probably as good as it gets when it comes to uh, eye candy with the platform. As you can tell with the uh, effects here, you're trying to unlock the uh, device. Once you get out of that, you're greeted to the home screen, the main menu. It's laid out in your traditional grid-like view. So very simplistic, easy to use. For most things, you click on something, it opens up. But for the most part, it is extremely outdated looking. Fortunately, the handset is preloaded with the Opera Mini web browser and offers a decent web browsing experience, though it does take a little bit of time loading up web pages uh, via 3G connectivity. Thanks to its capacitive touchscreen, at least a lot easier to maneuver around uh, instead of a uh, resistive touchscreen, and for the most part, it's pretty usable. Don't expect a whole lot out of the handset's 3.2 megapixel camera. That's because you're probably not going to want to turn them into 4x6 printouts. In terms of overall quality, it's rather poor looking. Details are very soft in tone, color reproduction is on the cooler side, and it doesn't handle dynamic range that well. It tends to overexpose things. In low lighting conditions, there's just a lot of graininess and digital noise. As for video recording, all we have to say is just forget about it. It has a maximum shooting resolution of 176 by 144 pixels, so don't expect a whole lot in the details. It's pretty much lacking that area. It's quite evident. It moves very slow at 15 frames per second, and audio recording is extremely distorted. It's pretty bad, to tell you the truth. Luckily, call quality is somewhat tolerable with the Samsung Brightside. The earpiece puts out a decent volume, and voices are clear and distinctive through it. On the other end of the line, there are callers did say that our voices have a little bit of a uh, crackly sound to them, and when we switch to speakerphone, it exhibits some squeaky tones. For a feature phone, we were hoping to get a little bit more out of the handset's battery life. With its 1000 mAh battery, less than two days of very light usage, it's only down to two bars left. It really would drive us crazy to wonder why would anyone think about purchasing the Samsung Brightside, especially for $100 with a two-year contract. Yeah, you have a texting device, which is great for kids, but for the $100 price point, it's not worth it. You're getting a device that's lacking in features, very bland, and you could probably pick up a 4G LTE smartphone, a basic one even, for the same price, and you just want to stay far away from this guy. So if you'd like to learn more about the Samsung Brightside, you can check out our website, guys, phonearena.com. This is John. John V, thanks for watching.